Do you believe, Jesus asked Nathanael, do you have faith? Or really, do you trust in me because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? Well, we translate interchangeably as to believe or to have faith or to trust seems to lose a good deal of its force when compared to the implications of pistuo in the Greek. Okay, I want you to take just a moment and fasten your seatbelts, because in the immortal words of Jerry Reed, we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I always wanted a Thunderbird as a child. When we conceive of trust, our notions of what it means to trust, what it looks like to have faith or to believe, whether we're talking about God, strangers, our children, our dog, our priest, we have learned to think that trust is something someone earns, as though a person is working off a debt, or as if trust is something I give, as in I give you my word. Given the transactional orientation of the English language, not to mention the transactional nature of society today, it is challenging for our modern ears to hear and understand the nature of trust at work between Jesus and Nathaniel. Even giving one's word has been disconnected from its deep connection to a kind of death vow where one's word is one's life. Nathaniel makes his confession, Rabbi, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. I don't know about you, but I'm just as surprised as Jesus in this scenario. Nathaniel is awfully quick to believe Jesus is the Messiah. All Jesus had to say was, I saw you under the fig tree. What is it that makes Nathaniel so ready to name Jesus as the Messiah. If you watch the Chosen series, which goes through the accounts of Jesus' life with his disciples, you may, like me, have enjoyed how the writers portray some of the disciples. How they portray Matthew is infinitely amusing and makes all kinds of sense if you read Matthew's gospel. And I really love how they portray Nathaniel. He's completely honest. He has no need to beat around the bush. He says the honest thing that comes to his mind. Doesn't like somebody's outfit, he just says so. Like Jerry, you might want to rethink that vest. What has any of this to do with pistues, trust, faith, or belief? I'm so glad you asked. Everything everything. Pistuase in the Greek bears the deep connotation here of a state, a state of being persuaded. Let me be clear that this is not to suggest that Nathaniel is easily fooled. Rather, it indicates a trustworthy state of being, someone who is ready to trust because he is without deceit in himself. The key information that Jesus gives saying that Nathanael is one in whom there is no deceit or in other translations there is no guile expands our sense of what it means to trust or have faith, not just in Jesus, but to be a person of trust. Now, as we weave this wisdom together with what the Apostle Paul has to say about avoiding prostitution Hear me out, they're actually connected. We begin to recognize that to know our bodies to be temples of the Holy Spirit and our capacity to be persuaded of the truth of Jesus are inseparable realities. I had coffee with a friend of mine recently who was telling me about her journey from atheism to becoming a follower of Jesus, in which she said that she found herself open to Jesus and actually feeling a desire to follow in his way as she began to declutter her life. As I listened to Monica's story about how she Marie kondo her life, I began to hear how she was discovering her body her incarnate life in the world, 
to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. I began to feel the energy of God all around, she said. And what's more, Monica said she began to feel how things in her home that she didn't love were not simply taking up space in her house, but they were stealing her energy, stealing life and attention from her. As she removed the things that she did not want, things that were cluttering her life, her eating habits changed. She stopped drinking. She felt a kind of lightness in her being. And this lightness opened her to a kind of mystical experience of being with Jesus. Her capacity to trust God and to know God was relative to the things in her environment and life that were blocking, as she describes, blocking her from actually having new experiences of God. When she removed these things from her life, which involved quitting her job, removing herself from a difficult relationship, and getting rid of clothes that she didn't love, and a whole lot more, She had room not for more stuff, but for a new way of being, a new way to live and breathe and to discover who she is newly in relation to wholeness in God. This is what a disposition of trust can look like in our lives. This is what a disposition of faith can reveal in our lives. When I am honest with myself and with others about what is meaningful and beneficial in my life, suddenly, suddenly I am free from the false expectations of culture, tradition, or the false expectations other people place on me, and I can newly experience who I am in relation to Jesus, who I am as a shrine as an altar of the Holy Spirit through which the mysteries of God unfold. What opened up for me in the conversation Monica and I were having about the relationship between decluttering and distrust is recognizing that Jesus' invitation to those who would follow him on the way is come and see and that it is our willingness to remove from our environments, to remove from our lives, habits, practices, or routines, removing any clutter that may be preventing us from new experiences. This is what conditions whether we will forge deep connection with God and others, whether we will hear and receive the invitation to come and see what Jesus is up to in the world. And deep down, we know what Jesus is up to in the world. It's the same thing God has been up to with the world ever since the Spirit first hovered over the waters of creation. God was in Christ, says St. Paul to the Corinthians in his second letter. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, forgiving sin. To follow in the way of Jesus, then, is to participate in the world's reconciliation and forgiveness. And while this reconciling may at times be difficult to see, faith, reminds Martin Luther King Jr., faith is taking the first step when we don't see the whole staircase. Our ability to take this reconciling step, to move without hesitation to trust in the way of Jesus, is, says King, a disposition requiring the transformation of our hearts. As King writes elsewhere, a man cannot forgive 490 times without forgiveness becoming a part of the habit structure of his being. The habit structure. Forgiveness is not an occasional act, says King. It is a permanent attitude. 
the invitation of the gospel, the invitation of Jesus to follow in the way of trust begins with an awareness of what our hesitation to love and forgive is attached to in our lives. If we have some hesitation to forgive, some hesitation to love our neighbor, this reluctance, this dishonesty within ourselves is attached to some habit, some impulse, perhaps even some object in our home that we are holding onto, our hesitation points to some sort of clutter in our lives. If we are not finding ways to feed the hungry or to make time for spiritual practice, for instance, there is something in our lives that has us inwardly focused, some attachment that's constricting our imaginations, our sense of reality, closing us in on ourselves. And so Jesus invites us to ask ourselves, what are those things? What are the things, what are the habits, what are the obstacles blocking us from living lives of reconciliation and forgiveness? the lives of trust that deep down we all want to live. Trust, as Jesus reveals and bears witness, is a disposition. It is an embodied comportment whereby we relate to the world and others without ulterior motive. This is what it looks like to be a temple of the Holy Spirit, Trust hereby does not involve self-interest. It is, as Nathaniel embodies, guileless. Trust is an orientation steeped in honesty like a long, loose-leaf tea, conditioned by wholeness. This canonic trust, this self-emptying faith, cannot be given or received without giving our own lives and receiving the lives of others, especially those who differ from us. It is reciprocity conditioned by a deep, interested love for another person or group of people in the wildness of their particularity. In short, trust is the absence of control. It is unafraid of the future, with great courage and with eyes wide open, trust risk the possibility of transformation at every turn, forsaking personal agenda and letting be any potential of betrayal. We have seen this form of trust embodied in Jesus of Nazareth, in Martin Luther King Jr., and in a whole host of others who have gone before and many still alive today who have decluttered their lives, who have removed anything preventing the newness and life-giving possibilities of God from entering in, awakening newly, to their own lives as temples of the Holy Spirit. But let's face it, this takes some doing. It involves deep attention, a transformed and transforming heart. It requires what David Brooks calls a new construction of reality. As Brooks writes in his new book, How to Know a Person, we cannot face the challenges in our lives at the same level of consciousness at which we created them. We cannot end racism in the world, for instance, by continuing to believe that there are such things as different races among humans. We need the consciousness of Jesus to be operative in our hearts, so that we align with all people as God's beloved. Another way of saying this is that as temples of the Holy Spirit, routine decluttering is essential. 
naming and removing from our lives little by little the many ways we prostitute ourselves and others, removing anything and everything blocking our hearts from seeing, hearing, speaking, and moving as Jesus sees, hears, speaks, and moves. The invitation of Jesus to come and see is the invitation to remove deceit from our lives. And while King reminds that we cannot see the whole staircase of radical forgiveness and unconditional love, what Jesus reveals is that each trusting step is what actually creates the staircase. With each trusting step, each trusting word from our lips, our hearts are transformed. The world is reconciled as we become what we truly are, temples of the living God. Amen.